Okay, we're going to start off by doing, um, we're going to show you some how to control hardware, right? You guys all want to see the hidden secrets of how to prevent those stupid little USB keys from getting on your network, right? Right, so I'm going to show you how to do that. It's super awesome. First and foremost, the hardest part is actually getting a hold of the hardware you want. That's the very first step in the process, is actually getting a hold of the thing you want. And we're going to play a little pretend here. I don't... I don't have any USB keys and I'm using VMware as my environment. So uh, with that in mind, I'm gonna, we're going to pretend that my, I'm going to banish CD-ROMs. That's right, banish CD-ROMs for the whole environment. We're going to pretend they're USB keys for this demonstration. Is that going to be okay? All right. So first thing I'm going to do is on my machine, and by the way, this, uh, this works equally well for both um, uh, Vista or Server 2008. And I just happen to use Server 2008 to do this demonstration. Um, if I go into my configuration, which is uh, has the hardware manager in it, or rather, sorry, if I click in uh, Diagnostics, which has the device manager in it, if I were to have a USB key and put it in the machine, I could then use Device Manager to get what's called its hardware ID. So again, I don't really have any USB keys. I'm going to pretend that I want to remove all CD-ROMs. So if I click on the device I want to get rid of, and I click on Details, and I click on Hardware IDs, something very interesting appears. Let me zoom in here just so we can get super clear on this. You notice how there's multiple descriptions for the same object. Why is that? Well, let's talk about an iPod for a second. There's an iPod. There's a 30 gig iPod. There's a 30 gig iPod with a scroll wheel. There's a 30 gig iPod with the not scroll wheel. There's a video 30 gig iPod. There's a color video 30 gig iPod. You get the idea? There's multiple ways to describe the same device, from generic to very specific. That is what we see when we look at the hardware IDs information as well. We see very generically, this is called a CD-ROM. Somewhat less generically, it's called this. More specifically, it's this. Most specifically, it's this guy. This whole line is the most specific way to describe this device. Does that make sense? So what we're going to do is we can choose how specific we want to get. If we don't want any USB keys at all, we would select, we'd find a USB key and select whatever the heck is at the lowest line. If we wanted to, if we had a, a SAN disk, and we said our corporate standard is the SAN disk, great, well, we would select probably the next lineup that said SAN disk something or other. But if there was a, uh, an encrypted SAN disk, maybe that's the next lineup, and we would select that guy, because then we know we're only going to receive and embrace you know, encrypted SAN disks. And then maybe the next lineup is a 32 gigabyte or 32 megabyte SanDisk. Does that make sense? Encrypted SanDisk. So you need to first have the hardware and know what each of the descriptions is. I'm going to go as specific as possible here. I'm going to right click over it and click copy. And obviously when I do that, um, I now have something I could paste into Notepad if I was so inclined. There it is. What I'm going to do now is restrict these CD-ROMs for, the for the entire environment. So I'm going to click on uh, my console here. And at the domain level, I'm going to um, Restrict evil hardware. Right click, click edit. And under computer, policies, uh, admin templates, system. Again, I just happen to know where this is. In the labs, I'll point you right to it. Don't worry, you don't have to write it down. I have it in the labs for you. Under device installation, device installation restrictions. there is a policy that's called prevent installation of these devices that match any of these device IDs. So when I click it and I click enabled and click show I can hit add and paste in what I captured from device manager. Click OK and now that guy is enabled. And I bet you're thinking if I just simply run GP update, I'll be restricted. Now, meanwhile, while that's going on, I want to point out that there's another policy setting that's relatively interesting, which is called um, display a custom message when installation is being prevented by a policy. Um, 
It works sometimes and not other times. I just figured I'd put that out there in case you want to test it out and notice that it doesn't always work. Okay. So meanwhile, um, I've now updated my policy setting and uh, let's go over to my CD-ROMs and see if I uh, still have access to them. And sure enough, I do. What's going on here? Well, the problem is that what happens is that it only prevents the device driver from loading if it isn't already loaded. That's not good. So what ends up happening is, thankfully for USB sticks, you're constantly pulling them out and putting them back in, and it gets trapped at that point. So you're okay for USB things. But what about what about this scenario? What if I want to eliminate all SCSI cards or all scanner cards or all kind of some kind of fixed device in the machine? Or floppy drives. What am I going to do? So in the book, I talk about this tool called DevCon, which will allow you to, using a script or the group policy preference extensions a little later, simulate the removal of the device driver. So therefore, if it tries to be re-enabled, it gets prevented by the policy. Does that make sense? We're not going to demo that now, but you get the general feel for it. So to complete this demonstration, what I'm going to do is click back on my CD-ROMs, click delete and delete each of them to simulate what it's like if I were to remove the USB device. Okay, because okay, we're, not, we're not actually doing that. We're doing something slightly different. And now we're going to simulate putting it back in by right click and select scan for hardware changes. Now, it goes to other devices and it says installing device driver status and then hopefully we'll get some kind of preventative mechanism here. If I double click it, just to watch it, aha, look, installation prevented by policy, but the other one says ready to use. Why is one prevented by a policy but the other one is ready to use? The answer is that they are actually fundamentally different. This one, if you look really closely, this one is listed as CDR00, and I listed this one as CDR10, which means that their most explicit descriptions are actually different. Again, it comes down to, to deciding for yourself, do you want to go more generic in your description or more specific in your description? And then you can decide how restrictive you want to be. Does that make sense? Okay.